Tell you what I'm bloody sick to death of, a lot of things, I think I'm gen wise, Husey loses it, but I'm also sick of everyone being enamored with American culture just because they've got a few bearable organs of soft power. While what have we got? Screen Australia with their billion dollars a year. I could save you that billion right now. All you do is you hire one of those day program NIDA graduates to just stand in front of a camera to a 4,000 Instagram followers. You should like, be totally ashamed of yourself, hey. And, oh no, serial killer's coming to kill me. No! Does Screen Australia get a billion dollars? That was really hard to follow. Yeah, well, Whatever, the point is that they, they get too much money for that. That's all I'm saying. Like, just, I'm not, there's no facts in this. This is all just feels, all right? Doesn't matter what the funding is, just put everything that you've currently got into other projects into the castle too, then everyone's happy. But until then, we are going to compile it. Sorry, I just snapped my laptop over there. We're going to compile a list that I have on my laptop of all of the Australians and Australian characters that I think need to be mentioned in our government funded art that aren't getting their dues. And let me know if I've missed out on any, but I think that this is an extremely comprehensive list of Australia's greatest unsung heroes. Well, this is cheap advertising even for my standards, but hey Sydney, I've got a show on the 28th of September to the 1st of October. Come on down, because if you want to see a show about ancient Rome produced specifically by me, I think this is going to be your best opportunity in life. <laughs> Make sure that you get your tickets there, because you won't regret seeing it. That is all. See the rest of the show. I've got COVID, by the way. Anyway, see ya. I won't have it by then, though. I'll be out of lockdown. Australia's greatest unsung heroes. Strap in, because one of those characters might be ones that sell strap-ons. And with the comments, no silly ones, okay? This is going to be a flawless list. We're going to be very serious with this. This is a list that no one can disagree with, which is why we're starting with... Waleed Ali. No, 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 no. Okay, but we're actually just legends, all right? and legendary ideas such as Peter Costello. Well, if we celebrate people getting a silver in the Olympics, why not him? If you were gonna make a biopic of that man's life, it'd be 10 seconds long. Uh, can I be prime minister? N no? Uh, okay, hope you don't mind if I wriggle in here and yeah. <laughs> But this isn't just for individuals. Oh no, this is for characters. We're trying to commemorate certain sectors of society, just like the US constantly does, where they're always just propping up their troops and lawyers and gigolos. We have to commemorate anyone that does those snow traffic weather surf reports on FM radio. You know that? extra 30 seconds they tack onto that mandatory five minutes of news that no one listens to anyway, let alone the guy at the end that's calling in from a crackly phone that even if you wanted to listen to him, you can't. <laughs> That man needs a movie. It's the scale end of Peter Costello's job. Like, in an industry that is constantly cannibalizing itself, how is the most useless job still there? And it's high risk and expensive. He's flying around in a helicopter. Those things are death traps. They crash all the time, just to say. On a traffic southbound and on the M5. Well, actually, there's been traffic on the M5 ever since it opened. I mean, it's exactly the same, but the GPS shows this now. I really don't know why I'm in a helicopter. And, oh, no, the radio station checked out. I mean, if you're entertained by speed, you're going to be entertained by that. It's the same story. As long as I stay in the air, they can't tell me I'm fine. Speaking of radio, women from the western suburbs that ring in to give shit relationship advice. That needs to be commemorated. I mean, I suppose Rebel Wilson spent a large section of her career commemorating exactly that woman. <laughs> but not enough. And also... Doesn't need as high a budget to entertain me. You would go to the cinema if someone just collected every time someone across the country rang in and said, Honey, I'm telling you, if you and your partner love each other, everything will work out. You have to trust me. How can she trust you? She doesn't know who you are. Why do you ring in for these segments? We have a saying in Lebanon, love conquers all. And of course, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Sophie Bug. That is Arnie Shelley with the looks of a Gold Coast meter maid. What's not to like? She's the perfect Australian woman. It is a true crime of genetics that she neither bore the child of Shane Warne or Steve Irwin. We could have had an Australian demigod. It is a true crime of genetics that that didn't happen. And I think that we need to commemorate even just the alternate universe where that might have happened. A love triangle movie between Irwin, Warney and Monk called I'm No Monk. Yeah! Having it off with both, but I don't know who's the dad. And wait, let's wait for his first word. 
Crikey, Ed, Steve's, how's that Shane? And of course, we have to document our own eight mile rags to riches stories, which are very heavily based off eight mile, admittedly, which is everyone at year six who thought that a good talent for Talent Quest would be to just get up on stage and rap along with one of Eminem's songs and just yell over the top with the same microphone that the principal uses to repeat over and over. No hat, no play. So not as good audio as what would be recorded in a Dr. Dre studio, admittedly, but it was an incredible moment, the shock on everyone's face after they were about to take the bow and then they saw six hundred disinterested primary school kids looking away as you realize oh okay it didn't have the same production quality as blue and yellow purple hills me and my friend on stage nervously mumbling and not knowing half of the lyrics and you might think that i'm secretly admitting something there but no mine was much more creative than that uh my friend and i got down on our knees and put giant oversized shoes on it so he looked like midgets like Rodney Rude. went up and did exactly the same thing and then the teacher was like no sit down that's offensive to midgets while we actually had 600 primary school kids going no sir let them continue you don't get the joke they're small also this why isn't there a movie character at a minimum if you're doing Australian films why has no one commemorated the extremely fat mum in Big W with a different face as there is a child screaming at the top of their lungs, louder than an airplane when their when their tiny little eardrums are popping? Like that much passion and rage as they're just like got this pure poker face on saying, Nah, I'm telling dad. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, you wait till your dad finds out. Nah, I'm telling him. Telling what? What's she gonna tell his dad? This is like a Tarantino film where you've seen the end, but they never show the rest of the film. That's why it needs to be done. I need closure on that moment. Don't you think there needs to be a feature film uh, commemorating this heavyweight of kindness, which is an old Greek mechanic that just gives you the pink slip. Maybe just flicks on the lights once and goes, yeah, okay, it's good. Oh, really? Like we're done here? Yes, yes, $40. Very simple poster, him just blowing his nose with a very dirty hanky, the mechanic. And the line is, it's okay, it's okay. And the next one, just because I think it's an inherently hilarious concept, just a film entitled Leighton Hewitt, the world's most impressive man. And can we get a spotlight on hot substitute teachers? They really didn't care if you did your work or not because they were just filling in time until a footy player asked them to marry them, right? But like, it was only ever the ugly substitute teachers that got you in trouble for not doing your work. And that's because they needed to become a full-time teacher. There was no saving grace. And so you got the full brunt of their genetics. And how about this one? This is a true crime that this man hasn't been canonized into a permanent cultural icon, which is a man sitting in the pub at the front and when you order a beer, you turn to him and he does the following and this is it. This is all the interaction you have with him. Nice friendly demeanor, doesn't say anything, lets you get on with your day. An Australian Santa Claus of a face, always with a beer, quite a portly gentleman. That's it, that's it, just that. One in every pub. What about, because I know Screen Australia is into their diversity quota or whatever, why haven't you done one about the 24 year old Vietnamese chemist that it doesn't matter what you come in for and ask, it could be the most embarrassing thing in the world, thrush cream without flinching. Okay, we're, so we've got several creams for that. If you want a strong female lead, it doesn't get much stronger than that, does it? Somebody coming in, asking for a contraceptive pill, and then they have the most neutral terms available for it as well. There's none of this like, okay, when did you f in the alley last? It's when was the event? I don't know if that's like an entire training segment of being a pharmacist, if two years of it is just some guy coming in front of you and testing you saying genital warts, and you just being like, 
No, nah, no, nah, okay, that's a fail. Koshy's got to be in there, obviously. Got Kevin Rudd elected, and even more importantly, Pedestrian is pretty much just there to give Carl Stefanovic shout-outs and make him down with the youth. So I am doing it for free, Koshy. Also because you also started Koshy's Biz, and that desperately needs a shout-out. It is truly phenomenal how you are the king of television, but that has no transition whatsoever on YouTube. None. You're not even the pauper of YouTube. You're kind of like the animal livestock of YouTube. Just that, 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 actually, no, not even that, because that goose video game still gets more clicks than you do. There's also the guy that walks into the public toilet that you're at, and he walks to the urinal next to you. Doesn't matter if the other ones aren't occupied or not, which is a gutsy move to begin with. But how alpha is this? Looking at you in the eye and saying, G'day, Torga. That is as dominant as you can get in Australia. Like, you know how in Asia it's always just the smallest businessman with the most connections to the triad? That's that's the peak of the hierarchy there. Here, it's a guy that has one of those semi-corporate jobs that still requires him to drive around in a ute a lot, like a, a project manager whose biggest brag is to just go, Chi Sun Corp Stadium. Yeah, I helped you out with the chairs in that one. That's our action hero, piss hard. And then finally, and I actually do think that this is a true crime against art that this wasn't made. Agro the movie. Don't know who he is, Gen Z? Well, that's why there needs to be a feature length film on him because if our national heroes include a donkey and a horse, why not aggro? What, too far away from being a human being? At least he looks like one. Apparently there was gonna be one made in the 90s, but Jamie Dunn, being the huge uh, cultural connoisseur that he is, said that, quote, the script didn't get there. This is from a man who played a puppet that used to sit there and pay out the human host for three hours a day impromptu. The script wasn't good enough for him. Can you imagine how fucking shit that must have been? It particularly angers me about this because I really do think that uh, if you're going to make all of these films about, oh, how elegant was 20s fashion and, ooh, the 60s was pretty shagadelic, wasn't it? We really need to point out that in the 90s, the world was obsessed with scary puppets. Alf, the Smith's chip alien, that was a thing of nightmares. Who thought on a corporate board, that's the face I want to associate with my brand? And still... Nowhere near as scary as Agro because Agro looked like he would never wash, not once. He looked more homeless than Oscar the Grouch. I still think that it does have cultural merit. Like it still should be made to this day. And it is a true shame that Baz Luhrmann decided to make his biopic about Elvis instead of Agro because good citizens of Australia, I ask you, which of these two is more rock and roll? If you think it's aggro, give this video a like. Sweet merch available at friendlygeordies.com. I think I'm gonna just start selling knockoff aggro puppets called Magro, just put a wig on him. And if you're still not convinced if this video deserves a like so that you can bolster the vote for making an aggro film and how much of a shame it was that it was Elvis instead, Look at this. This was the intro to Agro's Cartoon Connection. Tell me that this is not as good as Blue Suede Shoes. We get up every morning, just as the sun is dawning, and put our show together for you. So make the connection, the Cartoon Connection. We'll make you laugh and help you get through. Please share and comment below. Command.